Number 19. How much will the temperature of a cup, which is 180 grams of coffee at 95 degrees Celsius, be reduced when 45 grams of a silver spoon, which has a specific heat of 0.24 joules per gram degree Celsius at 25 degrees Celsius, is placed in the coffee and the two are allowed to reach the same temp. Assume that the coffee has the same density and the specific heat as water. Okay, so they're throwing out hot words here, guys, right? They're talking about specific heat, right? Where you have temperature differences, one's at 95, the other one's at 25. They're interacting with each other. They're, you know, being mixed with each other, AKA the silver spoon is being placed into the coffee. When you have two different substances at different temps and they come together over time, they will come to the same temperature, the same final temperature. This has everything to do with heat transfer. And when you see that you have two different substances, in this case, we have coffee and the silver, right? The silver spoon. We think of this formula for heat transfer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over here because um, I'm going to do a little chart on this hand side. Okay. Now, there's a lot of different theoretical things that we have to know for heat transfer, right? Basically, the first thing you have to figure out with is because I color coded this, one substance is red, right? And that means that you're getting hot, right? Red kind of signifies that it's getting hotter. And one is signifying that it's getting colder. So out of the coffee and the silver, the first thing that you should identify is which is going on the left and which is going on the right, depending on which is getting hotter or colder. So how I like to figure this out is I like to make a little chart. So I'll say I have coffee and then I do like this little chart thing here and I'll say that I have the silver spoon. I'll just put silver. Now in order to find out which is going to be the, the blue side, AKA the one that loses heat and which is the red side, which one is gaining heat, we look at the temperatures. Okay. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to read it again closely just to see what they're talking about. Now they're telling us that the coffee was initially at 95 degrees Celsius. So I know that my TI for the coffee was 95 degrees Celsius and the silver spoon was at 25 degrees Celsius. So my TI for the silver is 25 degrees Celsius. Now maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger, better. Okay. 25 degrees Celsius. Now they didn't tell me what the final temperature was, but they did say that the two were allowed to reach the same temperature. So the temperature, the final temp that they had between the two of them was the same. And that's the whole thing with heat transfer guys. That's a huge important, you know, uh, theoretical idea that we have to know that whenever we have something being heated up or cooled down, that the final temp is always the same, but we don't know what this temperature is. So maybe I will label this as X, but we can see where the flow of the temperatures are to determine whether which one is losing heat or which one is gaining heat. Now, between the two initial temperatures, the final temperature always has to be in between these two temperatures. You'll never get a final temperature that's way above 95, that doesn't make any sense, or way below 25. They have to be at equilibrium somewhere in the middle. So if I know that this temperature has to be lower, right, the final one is lower than 75, if this is like 70, right, it looks like the coffee is going down in temperature. It's getting colder. So maybe I'll put that. This would be a decrease in temp. And if I see here, if I'm starting at 25 and I have to go upward, let's just say that it's the same number. You see how I'm increasing my number. So my temp would increase. So there you go. This, a decrease in temp, it's getting colder, losing heat. This is a negative Q. So the coffee is on this side and for the other way, if we're increasing temperature, right, it's going to get hotter. So that means that this is a positive Q. The silver is on this side. 
So perfect. This is the silver. And this is the coffee. Okay, now let's start plugging in numbers that I know. And I'm just going to maybe, uh-oh, what happened to the T's? Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so now let's just plug in some numbers. So let's go with the silver. M stands for mass. They told us that I had 45 grams. So this is going to be 45. S stands for the specific heat, and it's the specific heat of the silver. And they told us that information, right? They said 45 grams of the silver spoon, and here's the specific heat of the silver. So I know this number as well, 0 0.24, whatever, joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now, do we know the delta T? No, we don't, because we don't know the final temp. Okay, but I can kind of make a uh, formula for it, right? Because I know that delta T, the formula for delta T, is always TF minus TI. So if I had to write this down, and if I extended this a little bit down, delta T, and maybe I'll write this in red now, delta T for the silver would be the final temp, X minus 25. And this is what I would put in my delta T. Let's go over to the coffee. The coffee mass, they said that it's 180 grams. So that's cool. The S, now they didn't tell me what the specific heat was, but they said that it has the same specific heat of water. This is the only specific heat that technically you're um, required to know, but that's dependent on your you know, teacher or professor. The specific heat of water is 4.184 and then joules per gram Celsius. But just remember the 4.184. Now the same issue here, I don't know what the delta T is, but I can do that little formula. Delta T equals final, which is X, minus initial, which is 95. And that's what I will be plugging in for this part. So now we have everything. So let's just start plugging it in. I'm going to work from left to right. So we have 45 times 0 0.24. Once I know that I already have the units, I don't put the units into my calculations. And then the delta T for silver is this one, right? So it'd be X minus 25. And this all equals a negative. You got to, you know, make sure that you follow the formula. Everything in parentheses, the mass was 180 for the coffee times uh, the specific heat of water, 4.184. And then we have another parenthesis in the parenthesis, X minus 95. Okay, now this just comes down to algebra, right? So the first thing I would do is I would multiply these two numbers, right? And these two numbers. So let's see, 45 times 0.24. I get 10.8, and that's now being multiplied by x minus 25, and this all equals the negative, whatever this is now, 180 times 4.184. I get 753.12x minus 95. Now here comes our lovely distributing, right? Guys, have you seen that in a long time? Remember, this has to be distributed into the x and the negative 25. Same thing on this side. So we'll do this all in one shot. So let's see. I have now 10.8x minus 10.8 times 25. Oh, God, I love algebra, right? But it's kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. And let's do this part. So 7, 753.12x minus 753.12 times 95. Whoa, big number, but that's okay. Don't be afraid. 71546.4. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute this negative finally into... Basically, you're distributing it again. You're turning this negative, and you're turning this positive. So what I can do is I can oops, get rid of the parentheses, 
and say that the first one now is a negative value and the second one is a positive because I technically I multiplied by the negative one. Now this is just going back to algebra, right? X is on one side, numbers on the other. So I will maybe do, uh, let's see, maybe I will plus just so that I get a plus X value. So I'll plus the 753.12 X on this side. And this will kind of go away. And then let's see, if I have the X's on this side, I have to move the numbers on the other side. So I'll plus 270 on both sides. And that will get rid of this. Beautiful. And now let's see what I get. So I get 10.8 plus 753.12. So I get 763.92 X equals 71546.4 plus 270. Big number, don't be afraid. 71816.4. Finally, solve for the X by just dividing by 763.92. Okay, this cancels out. And let's just see this divided by, whoop, 71816.4 divided by 763.92. I get roughly 94 wowses. And uh, talking about temperature here, so maybe we'll just say 94 degrees Celsius. So look at that, guys. Technically, the number 94 is still in between 95 and 25. But why did this, you know, why did the coffee not drop? Because the specific heat of water, aka the coffee, is so high. It takes so much amount of effort to raise you know, water's temperature. As we've all noticed, trying to boil water, it takes a decade right? So you won't see any really change in the coffee temperature, but the silver spoon is going to heat up real fast. Now, the question asked, how much will the temperature of the coffee be reduced? It didn't ask for what the final temperature of the coffee is. They just said, how much will the temperature be reduced? So now if I know that the final temp is 94 degrees Celsius, it only dropped by one degree. So one degree Celsius drop. And that is your final, final, final answer. Crazy, but that's chemistry. All right. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. The math gets a little bit tricky, but if you just keep writing it out, do the colors. Yeah, I believe in you guys. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes, and let's keep crushing it. All right. I will see you in the next lesson. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.